Oh, hi. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. I'm Tamara Robertson. When I started this journey, I was just really hoping to make the girls in science proud. Yep, that, Tamara Robertson. But I'm not just a myth buster. I'm also a chemical and biomolecular engineer. And this is my shop, where I talk superheroes, technology, and a whole lot of science. Today, we're going to learn about the science of energy manipulation. But first, I need to get ready. Oh, that's better. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, the science of energy manipulation. But what is energy manipulation? And why am I dressed like Robin? Stay tuned to find out in this episode of Superhero Science. In the world of comics, energy manipulation is the ability of a user to create, shape, and manipulate energy. Whether that means changing the type of energy, gaining the capacity to harness it, or simply being able to increase or decrease the amount of it within a system. Now some examples of energy manipulation in the comics world are things like energy detection, energy disruption, flight, power suppression, solid energy constructs, i.e. force fields. Oh, and of course, the always popular energy blasts. But why is the ability to manipulate energy such a big deal? Well, in the real world, we abide by the law of conservation of energy, which states that the total energy of a system can increase or decrease only by transferring it in or out of the system. It's similar to how we eat calories from healthy things like cookies, uh, I mean broccoli. And our body transfers that caloric energy into stored energy and fat cells, then eventually into kinetic energy for movement. Now, you are moving after you eat all those cookies, right? Anyways. So we can't exert more energy than our body has the capacity for because it's a basic N equals out equation. So of course, energy manipulation seems like an out of this world superpower, right? But what if I told you there's a superhero that uses an everyday real world form of energy manipulation? That's right, thanks to the world of physics, Carrie Kelly, aka Robin, is able to harness various types of kinetic and potential energy, such as gravitational and elastic, as her superpowers to back up Batman any day of the week. Now, potential energy is stored energy that depends upon the relative position or various parts of a system. A bicycle on the top of a hill, a book held over your head, and a stretched spring all have potential energy. So if potential energy is the stored energy, kinetic energy is what it is converted to when it is in motion. In this example, the blue ball has potential energy due to its height. The red ball has kinetic energy due to its velocity as it's falling. Carrie Kelly isn't the only super who harnesses the benefits of energy manipulation when it comes to their superpowers. In fact, perhaps the best known superhero currently with this power is the Scarlet Witch, or Wanda Maximoff. She was the founding member of the Brotherhood of Mutant, first appearing in comics in 1964 in Uncanny X-Men number four. Now Wanda's psionic energy manipulation abilities enable her to project energy blasts, streams, waves, and bolts, as well as to form highly durable barriers or force fields. With a laundry list of other abilities in addition to that, it leaves people wondering, maybe she's born with it? Maybe it's chaos magic. Getting back to Robin though, as a superhero armed only with a slingshot and parkour skills, you could say that Robin, aka Carrie Kelly, is a leading expert in real world energy manipulation. In fact, harnessing energy is her superpower. 
It grants her the ability to do things like use potential energy through her street acrobatics. We call it parkour nowadays, which enables her to use her momentum and speed to get through urban environments both effectively and efficiently to not only escape attacks, but to come to Batman's aid, which she does a lot. Such as when we see her leaping onto fire escapes, shimmying down vents, and scaling buildings, and Batman the Dark Knight returns. Now, obviously, extensive training and skill building is very important in preventing injuries in parkour. But the top parkour experts also know that an ability to understand physics and how to manipulate energy is also quite important. This is because while it may appear Carrie is only using kinetic energy for this superpower, she's also having to abide by one of Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion. No, no, not the fig guy. This guy. The guy whose laws of motion give us the basic foundation for physics, which you may be familiar with, right? Well, if not, here's a quick The three governing laws of motion state, first, an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion along a straight line unless moved by an outside force. Wow, okay, that was a lot. To put it simply, this ball is not moving, so it's at rest until I drop it and the force of gravity begins to pull it to the ground. It will drop straight to the ground unless I kick it, in which case my foot is an outside force. Pretty simple, right? For the second law, an object will accelerate if force is applied to it. For a fixed force, bigger objects will have a smaller acceleration, i.e they'll be slower. Simply stated, same height, same gravity, who knows about mass. Golf ball hit first that time, yes. So, with gravity again, being the same force pulling down, air resistance will make it so a larger object is slower. Now, I have a really cool clip from Mythbusters Jr. to just show you where we actually took a hammer, Thor's hammer to be exact, and a feather, and we drop them at the same time in a vacuum, i.e. space. So, check it out. Pretty cool, right? Now, for the third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That one seems pretty easy. If I hit this ball, it's going to go in the opposite direction, right? Pretty simple. And to think he discovered all of that watching an apple fall out of a tree. I guess you could say an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but the scientists will study you. The importance of these laws come into play in parkour movement, especially with the landing. As you can see here in this clip from Batman The Dark Knight Returns, Carrie uses a tried and true and very, very practical technique called a parkour roll to help dissipate the energy that she has coming into her leap, thus keeping her uninjured and allowing her to maintain her momentum forward. Okay, okay, enough about parkour. Let's get to the energy manipulation superpower I'm going to teach you to harness through today's DIY build. I'm talking about the power to convert potential energy into kinetic energy and using it to propel a projectile through the air using a slingshot. Now, Carrie Kelly uses her slingshot not to harm but rather to distract villains and give Batman more time to reach the fun tools in his utility belt. So remember, do not harm. For instance, you see here in book three, Hunt the Dark Knight, she might strike the villain in the forehead, but again, just to dismay him, not to hurt him. Now, the use of a slingshot enables Carrie to harness a different form of potential energy known as elastic potential 
energy. The energy stored as a result of applying a force to deform an elastic object by storing energy in the bonds between the atoms until the force is removed and the object springs back to its original form. Now there is a lot of objects that have been specifically designed to store elastic potential energy. For instance, there's the coil springs and wind-up clocks. Or as an archer stretches bow, both the bow and the string have it. A bent diving board before a diver leaps has it. That twisted rubber band that powered airplanes definitely has it. Oh, or my favorite, bouncy balls. Bouncy balls show elastic potential energy right before they spring back. Now in the case of a slingshot, the elastic object is in the form of the rubberized band of this slingshot. And the force applied is the stretching, or what is known as a drawback of the band. Now, there's a lot of science that goes into understanding elastomers. And lucky for you, I already covered it in an earlier superhero science video with the help of Elastigirl. I do recommend you head to my YouTube and check that video out later so that you can understand elastomers because there's a super, super fun DIY in it. But in order to ensure you get to build an energy manipulation device today, I'll continue on our journey. So slingshots are an especially cool tool for energy manipulation because you get to utilize kinetic energy and two different forms of potential energy, elastic potential energy and gravitational potential energy. To understand the energy manipulation which occurs with the slingshot, it is pretty important to first understand the steps that go into taking a shot. So first, you use the potential or stored energy of your arm muscles, which is then transferred to become kinetic energy or movement energy as you draw back the rubber bands with your projectile in the pouch. Now this imparts the elastic potential energy that is stored in the bands. When you release the bands, they start to contract and that stored energy is redistributed as kinetic energy and utilized by the acceleration of the projectile the pouch, and the bands themselves. Okay, it's time to wield your very own energy manipulation powers. Are you ready? Yes! Now, if you'd like to follow along with me at home, I'm gonna be creating a simple paper variation of a slingshot. You're going to need five sheets of paper, bonus if they're upcycled, two rubber bands. You can try different thicknesses because each one will affect your actual draw strength. Tape, you can use any type, but again, remember the lighter the better because the energy used to move the tape takes away from the energy used to move your projectile. Scissors, a measuring device, and writing device. Stack the five sheets of paper on top of each other. Measure out about a half inch from the top of your paper. Start rolling or folding your paper. So you're gonna go ahead and keep rolling until you're about halfway down your paper. So like this. Now, you're gonna cut a half inch slot into each side. And when I say side, I mean internal, this side. That's gonna be for your actual rubber bands. If you need help cutting, please ask an adult. You take your two rubber bands and you're gonna stretch them around the paper so that they go into the slot. When you have this done, you're gonna to wanna to continue rolling because you're just strengthening what will become your handle. Cut off the excess, put it to the side. Now you have your rubber band on the outside, it needs to be on the outside, and you're gonna tape the center of the paper. Do not tape your rubber band. Once you've taped that, you also wanna just tape the paper split so that it stays together. Now, your paper roll is actually going to create the standard Y handle shape. So what you wanna do is you wanna fold it in half, like this, and then you're gonna fold it again to make your Y's like this. You're gonna have to stretch it a little bit so that your rubber band is done. So it should look like this, like a Y. Again, your rubber band should be free hanging 
and then you should have a Y fold. You open it and look, there it is. Remember that scrap paper that we had earlier? Cut it into five segments. And then you're gonna roll it along the center like you did the big paper, and you're gonna fold it in half. Now this becomes your ammo, because you can fold it around your rubber band and shoot it. So set up something like small cups, or I've got playing cards, or you can do little targets, and you can work on your skills. Now, the world record for the most card faces hit in a minute is 47. That seems like it took an amazing amount of speed and accuracy to be able to do, right? So how many can you get up to? Compete with your friends. But remember, practice makes permanent and skills are built one shot at a time. Always be safe, clear your range area, do not have pets, parents, or friends around that could get hurt, okay? But again, you take that, you roll it, you fold it, and you let it go. Have fun. Well, that's it for this episode of Superhero Science. I hope that you enjoyed learning all about Carrie Kelly's ability to manipulate energy in a real world way. And that you were able to observe some cool physics with your slingshot DIY. Until next time, no, no, Dexter, that superpower is next week. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll get it right next time. But until then, remember, superpowers are only one science lesson away.